Welcome to Wallets and Purses. So we are back for part two of the Who's Sitting at Your Table discussion, where we have Kyla Davis, a licensed marriage and family therapist based in Fort Lauderdale, to give us insight on marriage and how to handle, you know, issues that come up. So Kyla, I'm just going to jump right back into it. So it's pretty normal or it's becoming normal for couples to go through financial infidelity. In your experience, how do couples build that trust back after something like that has happened? And a follow-up to that is, how does a spouse handle um, the situation when they are getting triggered? Or, um, you know, it could be from actions from the other spouse or, you know, it could be promises that the spouse, the other spouse was, you know, committed to and didn't follow through on or what have you, whatever triggers, you know, whatever is triggering. Um, how do couples work through that and still be successful? That's a really good question, specifically the end piece of that question, because realistically, when things happen in a marriage or any relationship on a whole, um, there are reminders, right? You're, mm -hmm. There are things that are, that are going to happen that are going to take you back to that space. So again, when that happens, it's important to have a space of open communication where it's safe, where you're able to express, you know, what was the trigger? How did it make you feel? And, you know, how do we process that as a team, as a couple, and support each other throughout what's happening now in response to the trigger? Um, in terms of financial infidelity, what I always recommend is similar to what you had mentioned, Lucretta, earlier in terms of sitting down and having um, a budget night, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, it, it speaks to the idea of being honest, open, and putting everything on the table. This is where, you know, our finances are. This is my monthly income. These are my bills. These are, you know, our bills as a family. You know, just having that open communication monthly. Um, so Sometimes what I also recommend in the earlier stages is having weekly check-ins. So that way, you know, it helps to kind of buffer the idea that you're doing something behind my back. Because mm -hmm. if you're having weekly check-ins, you're having those weekly conversations, it helps to make you a little bit less uncomfortable and put mm -hmm. you at ease because you're training yourself to trust the person again. And then the hope is that the person who committed the infidelity is being 100% open. So there's that two, those two pieces, right? Mm -hmm. And it all boils down to communication and how you communicate. Um, once you're able to feel at, at a, once, once you're able to get to a point where you feel comfortable with your partner and you trust them, then you can step away to the weekly and step down to maybe bi-weekly or even monthly. But it's a process. It's really a process and it really, really comes down to communication. I really do like how this conversation is going. Uh, so one of the questions I want to ask is, how does having different visions or one spouse having no vision for the family cause conflict? And how can it be resolved? So I equate that to like burnt out. Like when you're working and you're overworking and you feel like you're the only person working and you're the only person trying to execute these goals that you have, mm -hmm. um, you, you, you're overworking yourself, you're overextending yourself, and then you become burned out. So that could happen in a situation like this, where your partner may not have the vision, or maybe you might be the person that's carrying the vision and executing the goals on your own. You might eventually feel burnt out, and then at, um, that could possibly lead to resentment. Um, because again, you feel alone in the process. What could possibly motivate the spouse that has no vision or maybe the spouse that has no interest at all? What could you do to motivate them? What are their life, life goals? What are the things that they want to achieve in a monetary standpoint, right? Maybe mm -hmm. it might be um, being able to go on yearly family vacations where you don't have to worry about expenses. So that could be a motivational thing where you tap into that and you're like, hey, remember, you know, you want to go to Jamaica just out of the blue this year. And next year you want to go to Mexico. We got to start saving. How much are you saving towards X, Y, and Z? So then you get them in a the habit of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and there's this motivational piece or this interest attached to it. So it's not like um, they're just pouring this this money in or they're saving or they, they have these financial goals and their interest isn't there. Because if you're not interested, you're not motivated. That's going to be very important for those folks who are couples, um, who are wanting to be married or who are already married, is just recognizing that you you know, there are ways to motivate each other and that's an important tool to keep in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. All right. So what advice can you give to couples thinking about marriage? You know, so from the, the financial standpoint of things, openness of, of finances, um, because of our base and us being um, Ramsey Preferred Coaches, we're more geared towards the don't mix your finances until you're married and here's why you know we kind of we, we try to put these layers in place to protect mm -hmm. folks, right just in case something happens and mm -hmm. you know now <laughs> um you know if, if one of the partners passed away and you didn't have a will but you weren't married you know all these things so we, from the financial coach aspect we try to you know, focus on that and help couples kind of work through that um, mm -hmm. and think about that as they think about marriage and also, you know, what goals do they have and do they align? And if they don't align, how to kind of, you know, have some cohesiveness in there and we're going to make it through. <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> and, and that's that's like a fairy tale, right? We know, you know, it, it takes a little bit more than love. Um, but I think you hit the nail on the head. I think being able to um, separate your finances and keep it separate until marriage is important. That is something that I always stress um, to my couples for the same reasons. You don't know what's going to happen next, right? Um, even in therapy, I, I always tell my couples from the jump, you know, I'm not invested in one or, other, one or the other outcome, whether you guys get married or you don't get married. You know, I'm not invested. I'm here to guide you guys. So, yeah. I always say that, you know, step, keep your keep your finances separated until you get married. And then, you know, even 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 if you get married, you still have to have that financial conversation yeah. and make sure that you know what you're signing up for. Do yeah. not go in with with no information. Try mm -hmm. to go in with all information. Every every nook, cranny, everything you uncover it, you have those conversations because it'll prevent conflict in the long run, so to yeah. say. Um, because you don't want to be married to someone ten years down the line and then you find out that you know they have to file bankruptcy because they weren't paying x x and y amount of you know payments that they were supposed to pay. Yeah. Um, so just having those conversations and I and and. I might sound very biased <laughs> because I'm a therapist, but premarital counseling is super, super, super beneficial. Even if you don't do it with a, a, a licensed clinician, you can do it with um, a pastor or a coach, you know, a life coach, anyone. Um, just because it's important to have those conversations that we don't normally have. And if we're being honest, topics centered around finances and relationships is very taboo. People yeah. don't feel comfortable talking about it. And sometimes it's helpful to have someone in the middle, someone mm -hmm. that isn't biased, someone that can give you an honest, you know, opinion. So that, that would also be my recommendation. Explore premarital counseling where the particular person that you're meeting with is um, going to ask the right questions.